so I'll start off with a few apologies. Um, the cave's in a mess and I'll explain that in another video. Um, and I've got a bit of a cold, so I've been kind of putting this video off. Um, but I thought I'd just get it done out of the way to kind of keep on with this monthly tradition. So it's currently the 3rd of November 2018 and we're going to talk about the October solar stats. And this month was quite interesting because this is the first month with the Tesla Powerwall 2. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to talk about October 2018 stats. Just a quick reminder to everyone in case you're not following along with this monthly theme. I have a 9 kilowatt solar array with a 6 kilowatt solar edge inverter. I am also having this paired with uh, a My Energy Eddy. This is a device that basically diverts the surplus solar power to heat your hot water. And as of, I think it was the 4th of October, Try and check the stats, we'll go for it um, in a moment. But early on in October, I had the Tesla Powerwall 2 installed. So now basically any surplus energy is going into the battery for usage later on. So I think this is gonna be interesting. This is really uh, the first month that the solar system that I was trying to put together has come to fruition. Obviously the weather's getting worse here in the UK, so winter's arrived, uh, which obviously impacts the ability to produce solar as well. But um, yeah, let's kind of go through the stats and uh, take you through it. So to start things off, um, and people mentioned this uh, to me before, so let me just check where we am, well, where we are, um, with predictions. So. In terms of what my predicted energy consumption was uh, by Forever Green using the Solar Edge tool, um, when I had my quote for the, the, the install, was for month of October, the system would generate around 590 kilowatt hours. My estimates on my own calculations were 490 kilowatts. And similar to last month, it's somewhere in the middle. So you can see uh, on the screen here, I've had a total of 542.83 kilowatt hours generated, which is fantastic. And then what has been different um, to the past months is my level of consumption. So you can see now 509.63 kilowatts of electricity was self-consumed by myself uh, and the house and the family. Um, with a very small export of 33.2 kilowatt hours. I still needed to import some, so some of the days in October have been really poor, so you can see this kind of week here, kind of the 12th through to the 16th was, was pretty bad, I had to do a lot of importing there, but still for the whole month I've only had to import 145.59 kilowatt hours. So. Just as a reminder to people what that kind of means, um, the way I look at the solar kind of payback situation is, you know, you're gonna, in the UK at least, you get a certain amount of electricity um, that you generate, you get paid for. Well, you get paid for everything you generate, and then you get paid for 50% uh, of what you generate as an export. Then also, there's the cost of electricity that I didn't have to buy, um, so that 509, 0.63 kilowatt hours, I didn't have to uh, import that. That's obviously all generated and then put in the battery or, or the hot water to utilize. So what I can tell you is based on my rough kind of maths, um, the kind of payback for this month is around 109 pounds and 65 pence. That's a combination of the feeding tariff, the export tariff, and the saving on having to buy the electricity that are used at the current rate. So let's get back to kind of how things stack up. So I don't think I can easily tell right now on the Tesla app how much um, energy went into it. A majority of it will be. I can tell you this month um, only 41 kilowatt hours went into hot water. That's because obviously there's not a, a large amount of uh, sunlight during the day. The 
Powerwall can store 13.5 kilowatt hours, so the majority of it goes there. If there's any surplus, it does go uh, onto hot water. And then when the hot water is hot enough, then I export. So you can see the fact that I exported 33.2 kilowatt hours on certain days, the power was fully charged, the hot water was fully heated, and we had some surplus that went out into the grid. Right now, um, the Tesla Powerwall app is a bit funny uh, in terms of it doesn't really give me a very um, helpful overview of my monthly um, statistics. So let me just look at the October one. It? I don't think it's going to let me do it. No. So it won't let me look at specific to October and what, st what stats I have. So yeah, I'm hoping that this is just kind of a, a glitch. The power was a bit strange in terms of how it gives you access to, to information. So maybe in the November month, we'll have a bit more information to share about exactly how much was consumed by devices in the house and how much was put into the power wall and how much was put into um, the eddy. But anyway, let's look through. So you can see we started off um, the month pretty good. And then it's kind of a bit of a up and downy kind of month. So the middle of the month, um, was pretty poor in, in terms of solar production, so large amounts um, of importing. But what I'm still happy is though that I've been able to utilise 94% of the energy generated and overall only have to import 22% of my um, electricity, which is kind of fantastic really. So if we go through uh, briefly some of the days, just to give a little overview of the kind of what things look like and how things are working. So I think it was here. Um, 1st of October was when I had the power wall installed, which is why you can see there's this gap. And that's obviously why I had to have all the electricity turned off whilst this was commissioned. So you can see, in general, I was pulling you know, that 500 or 400 kilowatt hours uh, throughout the night. Then as you kind of get up, kettles going on, extractor fans and what have you. As the solar's hitting, it's going into hot water and any surplus is being exported. And then at around 2 p.m. the power was turned off. And then, actually was that turned off? I'm trying to think now. I don't think this was when the power was installed. I think there was a, a, a power cut or something happened on this day actually. Because this is where you have the gap. Um, and then obviously it tails off. So we'll see on the next day how things look. Yeah, so still no power wall at this time. I think it was the fourth that I had the, the power wall installed. So you can see in general here, as much as we can, we've got you know, low levels of solar, everything's going and heating the hot water. Let's just keep skipping through so you can see the difference in the charts where there's loads of red at the beginning of the month um, because of the requirement to, you know, in imports, you can't be self-sufficient and off-grid. Okay, yes, so I think Maybe it was the third then that um, power was installed. Let me just, yeah, that makes a bit more sense, I think. I'll just check my calendar. I oh, know it was. It was the first that the power was installed. Okay, so that it, that that power outage was because of the power was installed then. Okay. So you can see here, what's basically happening is, I remember now, so at the beginning of the, the power wall install, there just wasn't enough solar to put enough energy into it. So, um, but on, by, by the third day, we did have a reasonably good day. So you can see here in the evening, apart from a little spike there when we're cooking, there's just this minimal pull from the grid, right? So it's like 30, 40 watts, which is fantastic. And into the morning, a slight blip, so the battery runs out around um, 7.45 in the morning, but the solar comes back, and you can see all the time there, you know, it's maximum utilisation or self-consumption of the power. If you're interested in kind of why there's always this little bit of red, I cover that in my other uh, Power 2 video where I talk about the fact that, you know, even though you're off-grid, you're never really off-grid, there's always a little bit of uh, power being pulled as you go through the days, 
you can see, apart from cooking, if we're pulling over five kilowatts, we, we touch the grid a little bit, but every single day, maximum consumption. And then this is the first time, I think, in a week, yeah, by the six, so it's been about three days, but then the power runs out just as we're cooking, and we have to start pulling from the grid again. Um, but again, the next day, kind of get some good charge in it, and again, we're off grid again, pretty much uh, into the evening, or running off the battery. So you can see there's a really big change in energy usage over the month where we used to have these massive red bits and now it's just this little constant kind of almost flat line um, import. So I'm really happy um, with how things have gone here. This was obviously a terrible day, lots of importing, very little solar at all, nothing in the battery. Next day is going to be the same, massive pulling a little bit into the battery that kind of self sustained us when the sun went down. Um, so this is the, the middle of the month where things were a bit crappy. But in general, yeah, I'm really happy with the battery. I'm really happy with this low level um, amount of uh, importing that we need to do. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the month. So I'm hoping this information is kind of helpful. Um, I'm probably wittering on about stuff that you guys aren't 100% interested in. But uh, hopefully what this is showing you is if you think about getting solar in the UK and if you've got the right orientation and the right kind of uh, roof and the sun's hitting you in a good place, then even in, a, you know, the, in the winter months, uh, like October, solar's still making sense. It's going to be interesting to see how things are in November. Um, the, the colds really come in and, and obviously the, there's less daylight hours, but things seem to be working quite well so far. Um, but yeah, that's it for October. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.